Yeah, cold here. Hello, Internet. I'm Dan. I'm Chaz, and this is Wine of Serious Business, episode 168. Yes, and we're back with two more Ken Wright bottlings. We do this uh, little thing we get into every year. We like to grab these splits of the Ken Wrights because they come out early, and we kind of get a little feel of the vintage, you know, it's yeah. nice, and then it kind of makes nice wine. So we like, to, we like to check them out. So the two wines we're checking out today are the 2011 Guadalupe. Guadalupe. Man, I, I don't even know. I, I would have said Guadalupe forever. I've heard yeah. a few people who've been into it for a long time say Guadalupe. If any of you from the winery watch this show, we'd love to see in the comments what you like to call, or the vineyard owners, like we'd love to see how you think it should be pronounced. Let us know. I would, we would appreciate it. We've asked that question before. Probably. Yeah. Right behind you. Yeah. And so then the last one we're going to do is the Macron, but we'll start with the Guadalupe, Guadalupe whichever one it is. So 2011. Let's go straight for it. Yeah. Another cool thing, right? Like Ken Wright, they, they, they always release early, but it, it's pretty consistent winemaking style from a wide range of vineyards across a few different AVAs. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, he's been a, a long established producer. And uh, so it's always cool to check in every year, just kind of like see what see what the wines are up to. Because it is, it is one like very like developed and, and honed expression of Pinot Noir from Oregon. That's um, a really good point. Yeah. And at this point, we've been, we've been following his wines long enough that we can get a pretty good feel of the vintage based on what he does. That's, yeah, yeah, that's been interesting to see, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, like some we like, some we don't, but that's, that's the great thing about like a wide, wide range of them, right? Yeah. 2011, pretty cool vintage, lower alcohol levels, but color's here. Color's pretty good here, so. Oregon funk all over this one. Right? Yeah, like, big time. Just big, wet forest floor. Kind of like some pine, pine trees in there. Mushrooms, yeah. Some nice red fruit in there too, and just a little bit again of the campfirey thing that we're getting before, but no, nowhere near. Uh, it's all underlying the like big Oregon funk that's going on. Super ripe right strawberries, yeah. I think too. Hmm. It smells interesting. I dig it. Yeah. yeah not not as initially delicious to me as some of the other wines we tasted, at least on the previous show, but uh, yeah. That's, got really, that's really nice right off the bat. Yeah, a little bit of depth of fruit right out and of the And that's gate. delicious. This is really quite good. Um, just kind of sort of struggling to start, how, where to start out with this one. So this this one has got a really good integration of fruit and structure mm -hmm. already. The acidity levels and tannins are balanced really well with the intensity of the fruit. The fruit is on the darker side for me, but it's a whole sort of you got the whole bouquet of, red, of, of dark red fruit here, um, sort of fresh strawberries, but yep. dark, dark cherries. Um, I totally agree. I totally agree. It, and there's good complexity, like yeah. right as the fruit hits the palate, like all these flavors are kind of coming in right away. Right. Um, they, they don't, they don't, they don't kid around. It's yeah. Like, and they're, they sort of, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're overwhelming almost a little bit, at least whatever. Yeah, it's a lot. We're, we're tough to wrap your brain around. Tough to wrap my brain around what's going on right now. Yeah. But yeah, like the fruit just kind of like rushes onto the palate right away. Um, the, the structure builds up kind of later, and there's something like there's a there's a bitter touch on the center of the palate um, that seems kind of related to the fruit too, and it's not like a greenness uh, like you see, like you see in some wines. Uh, this is this is something that's like kind of been on my mind more lately as I hear Pinot Pinot Noir producers even talk about that. Maybe maybe coming from the stems, maybe you know just like tied into the fruit where it's a little bit of contrast to the juicier part of the fruit. Hmm. This is delicious. It's awesome. It's really quite good. Oh man, yeah, like the fruit's got really good complexity tape, showing already. It tapers off super linear too, like, mm -hmm. uh, there's, it doesn't sort of, it, there's no hollow, it's not hollow anywhere, and it's got a very long finish with absolutely no hollow spots. Um, yeah, really, really good. 91 points for me. I like this one quite a bit. Man, we, this is, well, this is good, these yep. two shows are showing some differences, right? Um, so that, that touch of bitterness provides some interesting contrast, but to me, uh, the finish, the, the finish in general is a little, little on the rough side. And I'm, I'm thinking, but it's not due to acidity. Um, I'm getting just kind of like some firm it's tannins. It's tannins, yep. yeah. And, and not that it's a super tannic, grippy wine, but it's no. just a little, a little out of whack for me. So, oh. so, so this is uh, 88 points for me. Because man, the, still the the fruit on the front end of it, I'm still really digging. 
and I could see this being something that I was really excited about in a year ish. Right. Um, I think I think based on the structure and the intensity that it would age pretty well. Yeah. I'm having a hard time talking today. Really? You've been on Yeah, no, I, I'm I think. just I'm, yeah, as we're drinking more, it's slowly like just collapsing. Eroding. All right. Yeah. Well, we've only got one wine left. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one. The Macron 2011. Thank God we've only got four. That's you're, okay. you're at home. You're yeah, at home. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, shout out to Tom Scarpinato. He, he uh, loves the Macron Vineyard. Kind of got us turned on to it with his excitement. So we always check it out every year. The Macron is one that typically I like every year. I know in 2008, I really liked yeah. 2008 while bottling. 2009 was pretty good too. Um, yeah, it's always been one of my favorites of the of the what like nine or eleven. Oh, I, it, it's a, it's double them. digits for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly how many. Wow, quite a bit different. Four is about as big as my rinse. Quite a bit different here. Right. Both these are both Yamhill Carlton wines, but that's where his winery is located, so it makes sense that uh, it's got it. Good number of vineyards that he works with in that area. Okay, right in Carlton. So the nose in this has changed from when we smelled it before. <sighs> Definitely a darker nose, like in comparison to all four. Like this has like kind of a little bit of the organ funk going on, but I I feel like there's a little gamey note to it as well too. Absolutely. On the pre-taste, the only thing I got was the gamey note, right? Like it was. Oh, it was okay, like this sure. is burnt meat, burnt wood, campfires, cooking it over the over the campfire. That's all I smell. Now some of the red fruit is starting to come through, and it's on the darker side, but the nose is still quite gamey. I agree. There's like some savory spices underneath there, too. Man, I know some of you guys out there uh, watching this really like those more savory wines. Um, then you like this? Yeah, like yeah. this. <laughs> uh, the nose, at least, that's what we're yeah. gonna, definitely just, just brings it home. Like, good complexity, and, mm -hmm. uh, and all of these pieces are working really well together in the nose, I think, too. Way, uh, I think, I think less fruity. Yeah. Actually, even across, I was going to say at the start, but as, as it goes across the palate, palate uh, less fruity across the board than the other three we've tried. Um, Let's say coming from the, the Guadalupe is is a. Uh, huh. Yeah, it's almost it's almost I'm not tough drinking this wine, but there are the the the, 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 the things that this wine is lacking are are magnified. Mm -hmm. Right, like the the initial hit on the palate is, is a little hollow, honestly, um, or just the fruit is not there. Yeah, it's not, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't come it, rushing out right away, and, and the tannins start in a lot earlier. A lot earlier, yeah. Um, so to say, you were saying that this one sort of got a roughness. This one's got a roughness to me personally, mm. right? Like this one, the tannins hit quickly, and they're and paired with like a lower fruit intensity and flavor intensity. I think all throughout, um, yeah. You just they're they're a lot more apparent than in the first than the first in the Guadalupe. And to me, the fruit's just, the fruit is still there. Like I'm getting more like blackberries, maybe a little bit of cherry, but like just ripe blackberries are the, are the bulk of the fruit for me. Yeah. But they're behind the structure uh, right now, and I really like the the blackberries seem to have like a sense of depth to them, and they linger really well. Um, but the but the tannins are kind of like a blanket over the top of everything right now. I agree with that. Um, and, and I'm not getting quite the. I, I wouldn't describe it so much as a bitterness, and more more to clarify, not even so much to disagree, but just to say that, like from my palate, the experience between the two is definitely different. Like when I say that the tannins are heavy here, it's not the same as I was experiencing. Okay. In the other wines, but uh, the tannins do have a weight here, and they do have a significant amount more grit um, than any of the wines so far. Fast. It's, it's, it's weird with the delicacy of the fruit because there is some really nice fruit fruit components, and it's like. On the softer strawberry and softer raspberry and like sort of there, but man, it's just like yep. Yeah. And know. the acid's a little lighter, I think too. I think the structure's definitely more tannic driven here. It would be like a, like a heavily steeped red tea or a black tea if you did that. I can see like, that with like a little bit of fresh strawberry in it or something like that. It's 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 weird. I don't know. Yeah, I like the flavors, and, and I I feel pretty good about the idea of this coming together with a little more time in a bottle too. Like definitely, if you. You know, like say the tannins are at a nine right now, and if you turn them down to a six or seven with time, and if the fruit 
holds these flavors and that like like degree of complexity and and honestly, the fruit has some elegance. Yeah, it does. That? Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. You, you know, if you dial the structure down a few notches, and, and I, you know, I think time's got a good shot of doing that. If everything else stays together, this would be really enjoyable. Um, as it stands right now, as it stands right now, I'm going to go 86 on it, um, and that's that's more of like a snapshot of the immediate experience of the wine. The other ones that we taste are way more ready to go, and uh, Absolutely. and I think this has potential for the future. Um, and, and I think it's even that contrast, right? That if you're going to get a bottle of Kenwright wine to drink this weekend for dinner, Not pick something else. Own. If you're going to get a bottle of Kenwright wine to throw in your cellar and drink in a few years, and you like, you know, something with a little more stuffing to it, the idea of like those blackberries appeal to you more. Mm -hmm. This would be a really good candidate, I think. Mm. See, like this is not what I would pick to age okay based on the delicacy of the fruit like i i want something that's at least uh based on the structure is a little more balanced and i don't feel like there's that balance here mm. honestly um, oh okay I, I i think there's there is some nice fruit fruit flavors here and the structure while firm and over somewhat overwhelming to the rest of the wine it, it's it's not a, it's not a bad wine it's not hard to drink right like i'm still enjoying it but I'm just not terribly excited by it at all, and it's not something I would purchase myself. Yeah. Um, 80, 85 points. 80, 84 plus. All right. It's, it's just, yeah. And, and, and almost a disservice to it after tasting it, the, the, the wines that we've have come previous to it. Like, this is, at least for the, of the four wines, that this will be the last show, right? Yep, yep. Um, the least integrated, the least interesting, and the least... the, the, the most sort of firmest structure overwhelming the fruit out of all of them. So, sure. I don't know. Oh, for for me. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, you know, out of a full range, that's... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go 80, 80, 84 plus on it. All right. So um, so that's another quick show for you. Uh, got an idea for question of the day here? I know. So, so of, of, of... Okay, I'm building the question here. Yeah. Of... I know there's a lot of wine, or there's a lot of guys that watch our show that have been doing wine for a long time, or have been into long wine time. for a long time. Um, and I know for me, like I have a few t particular buyings, like in this this show, uh, is is a inst or is an example for us of a wine we check in on every year, to sort of check in on the vintage, check in on the winemaker, and and it's sort of a gauge for us at this point as to like it's 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 a, it's a snapshot of what's going on in Oregon, right? right? Cause, yeah, because he's consistent. And, and it's, you know, it's a developed winemaking style. Like, he, he's doing what he wants to do. There's, yeah. So, is there a wine like that, that's, that's like that for you? I know Evesham Wood is one I like to check in on every year. Right. And just get an idea of what's going on down there. Um, what's, what's your guys' wine that you, ha you sort of have to look at every year to see what's going yeah, on? Yeah, even if you don't like it, right? Like, it's right. just, that's something that, that a gauge that you use that's, to just check in on what's going on with the year. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. What, what's your guys' wine for that? If Sham Wood is that for me? Like the Le Puit Sec and then Willamette Valley. I would right? say even Valley. some of the lower value, yeah, the lower price point wines, right? Like sometimes you like them, sometimes you don't, but it's Bro always Bro some insight into what's going on. Broadly Willamette Valley, which we tend to do every oh, year. Oh, yeah, is that's another, another one. So. Another pretty consistent. Uh, what about you? <sighs> we want like you got a peep on. You got you to gotta check it out every year. Um, I really like to check in on Patton Valley um, because they're, right, they're Yamhill Carlton. They're like bigger and darker, not something that I drink all the time. Um, but since they have kind of a, 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 also kind of like a more unique style and kind of a interesting vineyard site, I think that I get some insight from them when I taste out there that mm -hmm. I don't get from, from anyone else. So I like to check in on it at least once a year, see That's what they're awesome. up to. So it's good to have those producers. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you guys think about that. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thanks for putting up with my <laughs> grammar tonight. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>